I have worked in a couple of companies earlier, you know, prior to Ericsson, and then I am with Ericsson for more than eight years now. And uh, again, uh, here it has been a fantastic journey, kind of really um, having an opportunity to work across different business units of Ericsson uh, in terms of Ericsson networks, then Ericsson managed services, and then currently in digital services. Uh, currently, I lead a complete uh, delivery transformation initiative uh, and industrialization and tools and automation journey for Ericsson Digital Services. And uh, I am very happy to share that, you know, while this has been a very exciting journey as a career, at the same time, kind of, I have a, um, a very cozy family with my um, spouse as well as two kids and my parents, everybody, and uh, kind of, you know, all of them are together, uh, part of this journey, in fact. So uh, that is how I am. Uh, I am also uh, pretty much a fitness freak, you can say, which I was not earlier. And uh, many of you might correlate that most of the women who are in uh, this career journey, uh, maybe health management, family management, and career management. These are the three focus areas most of the times, and it's always quite challenging to kind of really balance between all of them. Uh, but as women, we can do it all, I believe, and definitely I'm also part of this journey. So that is all about who I am. I think if it is okay, Pratishtha, should we be also starting with the presentation? Uh, yes, please, and thank you so much for your lovely introduction, Sarshana. Thank you. So let me share my screen. Uh, I, I will be uh, maybe, you know, going through a small, very brief uh, presentation, just a few slides, but maybe I might be uh, talking and explaining some of these. And also I would welcome uh, questions, maybe in the chat box, you all can, you know, ask in the Q&A uh, area. And uh, then I will try to answer them uh, after I go through some of these slides. Yeah. So uh, this is basically, you know, the pick with which we are starting the slide, you know, it shows uh, industrialization or industry automation, in fact. So uh, many of you might have heard about 5G, uh, at least I'm sure you would have heard about 3G and 4G, which is something which we have been using. And you might have heard about 5G technology, which is uh, one of the, you know, very advanced stage of telecom technology. and. Uh, in India, we may not still be having 5G, but uh, worldwide, at least there are 150 operators, you know, who have deployed 5G, which provides immense bandwidth and uh, kind of, you know, a very, very uh, small latency it means the response of the network is network is effectively very, very fast. Now, using this 5G technology, actually, the whole industry is going for a complete revolution. So how, if, for example, manufacturing is going to be managed, how, uh, you know, uh, all of a lot of different industries are going to be managed, starting from healthcare, you know, um, the, as well as, uh, let's say, supply chain management, a lot of things are going to really change a lot over the next couple of years. So that is why I thought maybe we will start with kind of, you know, this uh, industry automation based picture. And here we can see, this is inside the factory, you know, how different small, small robots, those are kind of, you know, uh, having actually small, small devices connected, which is also called Internet of, uh, you know, things, IoT. And through them using a very high bandwidth, large network, you know, the whole automated operations of the factory is being managed. So with this, I'll move to uh, some of our key technology trends, uh, you know, which we can see in 2021. Uh, so here there are about nine to 10 uh, technology trends. And uh, I'll kind of, you know, maybe start in the reverse order of maybe the growth which we see. And uh, here uh, we can see, kind of, you know, let's say zero trust and cyber security. So this is one of the trends. What this means is whenever there is kind of, you know, uh, any operation uh, in the cyber space, we need to believe that it could be 
uh, there could be a threat of security and hence zero trust. And hence, more and more we are getting digitalized. There is a lot of focus in terms of making, verifying everything, be it related to your banking automated operations. You know, we all use so many applications on our mobiles, you know, uh, to do all our operations. But because of security breaks and everything, you know, there is now zero trust uh, system being built, meaning a lot of verification and a lot of uh, background security uh, hooks will be in place, you know, and this is something which is now ever growing with much more digitalization of our operations. Second is remote and digital workspace technologies, and I'm sure we all are really now living through this, actually, this remote working environment, especially post this COVID pandemic. And uh, there is, again, a lot of focus here, you know, uh, on this area. Uh, that, uh, you know, we see these uh, technology areas really booming. And I'll again come to details of each of these, like, you know, how it we can correlate it with our maybe jobs or type of skills which are required. Uh, then we see human-centered digital experience. So again, you know, we know that augmented reality, virtual reality, gaming, you know, so many applications and and lot of it's a lot of focus on uh, the digital experience. For example, you know, if there are Olympics games going on, or just maybe a soccer match, then using very high bandwidth, which can come from the network, using a lot of advancement of all these technologies, how we can kind of you know improve the whole digital experience, or even for all the apps which we are using or maybe all the online purchases we are doing, you know, how we can improve the digital experience. So all that kind of, you know, will become uh, very, very relevant. RPA and hyper automation. So uh, this is again an area, you know, where a lot of focus in the industry to automate processes as much as possible so that uh, the enterprises, uh, you know, or the businesses, the business houses, they can really contain their costs. So whatever is very mundane, very repetitive, you know, those are some of the things which can be automated. And we as intelligent human beings, we should be doing much more valuable kind of jobs instead of doing repetitive uh, activities. So those are the areas which are getting automated through this. Uh, then kind of, you know, this is this one, you know, this is our called Internet of Behaviors. So um, uh, I will perhaps talk about it a little bit more in detail in my next slide. So this is something, you know, interesting. So based on our behaviors, based on how we interact with our digital system, you know, how things, how different signals can be picked up from there and how uh, kind of, you know, uh, we can improve uh, the things. So that is about IOB. Uh, the next one, again, you know, is intelligent business processes and vendor platforms. So here again, it is more about how we can transform, how each of the business houses or, you know, uh, yeah, those can transform their interfacing with their customers or their vendors, you know, how those processes can be managed in a more streamlined way, in an automated way, because things are so very dynamic. Like, just imagine the way maybe some of, of our suppliers like Amazon or maybe, you know, cl the clothing suppliers, for example, they evolved in last one year. I mean, they were always there, but the kind of service which we get from them now uh, is perhaps uh, it has gone through a huge change. And in fact, uh, I remember reading it somewhere, uh, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, he mentioned it that post uh, during pandemic, I mean, the kind of digital evolution we saw happening in two months, we could never imagine that happening even in two years time. So, so, so all the companies are really going through a lot of change in terms of the way that they are managing business, both with their customers and vendors and their complete business processes. Then I little bit talked about, you know, 5G uh, as a technology uh, at the beginning itself. And uh, that is something, you know, which is again a very huge, uh, it has a huge potential of changing our lifestyle, of changing the way uh, even, uh, you know, the complete healthcare uh, system will be running. You can 
using the immense bandwidth and and very high very uh, you know short latency of 5g communications network we can do all kind of remote surgeries using you know robots and and probes you know from a, uh, you know a remote uh, place and it can totally change uh, the healthcare systems it also has so many other applications like you know autonomous driving uh, you know the whole manufacturing industry again you know is totally kind of getting changed based on this then privacy and computation so uh, privacy is of course again a major major focus area i mean as we know again uh, with all the boom of uh, different technologies and uh, mm, so much of access of information our privacy is also a little bit at stake. So this is something, again, you know, uh, it's something which is really picking up a lot that how we can con contain that, how we can kind of, you know, uh, manage that. Distributed cloud and edge computing. So this is perhaps the second, uh, you know, uh, in the list, which is, uh, you know, from top, which again has very major up uptake. So all of you who are working in, cloud computing edge computing you know uh, definitely you are at a very good place and again uh, you know the the complete backend architecture server architecture of our data networks as well as telecommunication networks is uh, kind of moving into total cloudification and distributed cloud system so uh, this is again a very very a big area and has lot of demand and uh, the topmost one, you know, is definitely the emerging one is artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, you know, data science. So here again, I was reading it somewhere that CAGR, the you know, compound annual growth rate of this particular segment is 36 percent, you know, which is huge. So uh, in next two to three years, from a business standpoint, the way uh, Everybody is investing in AI ML related areas is huge, and there is a huge growth opportunity again. So these are some of the kind of you know overall technology trends. So this is again you know uh, I hope you can see my next slide. So I just try to summarize you know uh, th these trends uh, you know in a top down order. So artificial intelligence we talked about you know. Uh, again, there are a lot of things here. I mean, you one can be just, uh, just doing programming related to artificial intelli uh, uh, intelligence. So some of you who are uh, definitely kind of, you, uh, some of you who know Python, for example, that is one of the basis for programming of artificial intelligence. Now, you know, I'm sure you will be um, kind of, you know, you might be getting involved into projects which are related to AI. It also needs a lot of, lot of data modeling. And it, uh, you know, as you then, uh, rise in the value chain, you know, from programming to overall architecture, data modeling, you can be like, you know, full-fledged business manager, really defining different uh, business cases, you know, use cases, which actually will have an impact on the business, you know, through your artificial intelligence solution. So, so uh, this is again, the topmost area, distributed cloud. Here, uh, it, one thing is, of course, the cloud technology in itself. But again, there are a lot of variations. Like you know, uh, if it is, uh, if it's a cloud network on the network edge, you know, which will be kind of addressing maybe needs of smaller enterprises versus uh, if it's a kind of you know for a major telecom operator and where for them on their premises itself, we need to provide a small public cloud sort of a service but manage all the operations. So there would be different kind of subdomain expertise, which uh, you know, we will be needing to, uh, or different kind of little bit of difference in skills, which we will be needing to understand these kind of systems. So it's just not the programming or just not maybe, uh, you know, again, some of you who might be working here uh, or like maybe containerized systems, Kubernetes and all these areas, you know, it is also about understanding the whole architecture cyber security uh previously we talked about you know again uh, a very big area in fact it is you know and as there is more and more digitalization as there is more and more demand of everything happening online the overall kind of data network structure and architecture is getting more complex it is getting scaled up it's 
needing to be more flexible. So along with all that kind of, you know, having the right control on cybersecurity is a huge challenge for the industry. So that's where, again, there is a lot of demand. 5G, we spoke already, you know, intelligent and nimble business processes, like we give that example of Amazon, uh, you know, how it really further evolved and, uh, you know, and uh, I, I can, in fact, you know, give an example, like, for example, I myself was very reluctant to buy uh, my clothes online earlier, you know, pre pandemic, but now we got, we, there was no choice. And then subsequently, when I started buying my summer clothes and everything, you know, I totally started using, uh, you know, some of these, and these have really become so intelligent. It can uh, sort of model, uh, different clothes based on your body type you can select and it can really show you how you will look like you know some of the instagram apps which you might be using so all these need a lot of programming behind a lot of artificial intelligence again you know a lot of uh, automation of uh, the processes you know the way the user input is being received at, uh, by the software and then the back-end processing which is happening so uh, you know again that's why a lot of uh, growth in these areas. Uh, Internet of, of behaviors we touched upon briefly. So, uh, so based on, you know, behaviors of us as human beings, uh, application of AI and machine learning on top of that, and then taking some actions. This is what basically this area does. So, for example, if you are a health freak again, and if you are wearing your fitness bands then based on your trends uh, you know your sleeping patterns your uh, exercise patterns everything you know the software at, at the background will do a lot of play you know apply a lot of analytics and maybe it will suggest and come up with a workout plan for you you know based on all that data so there are so many kinds of behaviors you know facial facial recognition, for example, based on which, based on your expression, it can again take actions. And it may just, maybe you are not feeling very well, uh, you are feeling a bit sad, maybe then, you know, based on your facial expressions, it taps that behavior and it suggests you a playlist in Spotify, uh, which will kind of suggest, uh, you know, the kind of songs which will uh, lift up your mood, for example, right? So these are the kind of software which are Kind of being made all the time and which is part of this internet of behaviors rpa hyper automation so many of you might be working in you know uh, many of the robotic process automation uh, programming uh, area or you know it also includes ai eml everything together process mining so really understanding the current process and then suggesting what change can be brought in in that process to make it more efficient so all these come here total digital experience. So nowadays, the enterprises, business houses, they don't only think about just customer experience. Customer experience was always prime, but all the companies are really thinking about the employee experience also. Uh, and some of you, again, if you look at maybe the way uh, the IT network, uh, you know, if you are already working as a part of a corporate or, you know, in a company, you'll see that the kind of features and services even Microsoft provided as a part of its uh, collaboration tool, uh, that has changed so much, uh, right? It can today really tell you that uh, this is your lunch time and you should be blocking your calendar. You should not be working, you know, you are maybe focusing in something else. Uh, so those kind of features are coming. So even employee experience or uh, this Zoom webinar itself, what we are ha having, for example, you know, what kind of experience we can get out of these when we are in a multi-user experience. So these are, again, very important areas. Anywhere operations, so remote operations, we know, again, involving, you know, work from home, a lot of collaboration, productivity uh, tools, all these, again, you know, are important and uh, never trust approach when it comes to security, uh, you know, especially when it comes to your banking, financial, and those kind of information. So these are uh, definitely the key trends and all of our jobs are around this. So if I move to my next slide, now you can connect you know, uh, some of the things which I have written here, how they are related to the industry trend. And that is why we have jobs here. 
so we talked about 5G. So the first point here is like telecom and system integration expertise. So you can be, if you are a software developer, you can be part of, uh, you know, development of some of the telecom stacks. Uh, and typically in telecom, we will see that it's a 10 year, it's a one decade wave. So uh, 2G system started in some time, some time late 80s and early 90s. Then we had 3G and 4G. So over the last three decade, decades, you know, we moved uh, from one uh, to stage one, two, two, three, uh, or four technologies. And then now the next decade is going to be for 5G. So again, you know, huge traction here. So uh, be you, if you are a software developer, again, you can, uh, you know, be here. If you are already working uh, in some part of telecom industry, be it development or be it in the services, again, you know, huge opportunities here. Then cloud and distributed system engineers. So if you are having domain expertise related to cloud systems, you know, infrastructure, containers, uh, you know, Kubernetes, all these things, areas, you know, uh, and you can not only be a programmer, again, you know, you can be a system engineer there because the whole system engineering and architecture redundancy, how all these have to be developed, I think this is a major area. Uh, AI, ML, data science, we talked about, and again here, programming, architecture, and business, you know, all these uh, different kind of job roles are the ones which are in very high demand. So. If you are a programmer, of course, you will do the programming. You will need to know, you will have to have skills related to Python and many other similar uh, such programming skills, you know. Mm, uh, at the same time, uh, you know, if you have been an architect, maybe doing different kind of arc software architecture, you can still uh, kind of, you know, learn a little bit about the different concepts of uh, AI and you can, shift into uh, this area, you know, uh, AI ML based architecture and you can define solutions. If you have been doing business development or product management for uh, some other kind of products or other kind of business problems, now you can do some courses and certification on AI ML application in business and then you can join here. Then next is any other automation engineer. So, uh, automation is really, really in demand. Wherever you go, there is basically a lot of focus on automating the regular stuff. So like we talked about robotic process automation or even using Python or uh, simple scripts, you know, uh, uh, and all the automation languages, we can kind of, you know, automate the workflows. And there, it's, there, there is, you know, uh, and a lot of s new systems, new kind of products, which are, in offing, right? So every company, they are coming up with a new software product. So it needs a lot of testing also at the back end, you know, before they are able to release those products to the customer. So test automation is a, another area, you know, uh, uh, which is also a specialized area in automation. So how you can avoid putting in manual testing effort, you know, again and again for the, uh, as you go along with the software development cycle of the product. Then user experience designing. So all the applications we are using on our devices, different kind of devices, all these different applications. So user experience designing is very, very important. I mean, how in least number of clicks with best user experience with most efficient way, we can kind of provide something which maybe uh, users really want to see and the way users want to operate. So that's, Another specialized area, uh, digital transformation. So since the whole industry is going through a lot of digital transformation, I mean, let's say a simple example is uh, our passport uh, applications, right? So uh, so uh, if any of you had been kind of, you know, there uh, at that time, you know, maybe 10 years back, 15 years back, you know, applying for passport or applying even for trying to buy railway tickets, uh, those were so tough, right? I mean, we had to go through so much of uh, handwritten process, but now this is totally digitalized. Even the basic gov government processes, those are also being totally digitalized. I mean, we, we can do so many things just online. So this whole digital transformation the industry is going through needs a lot of thinking in terms of both user experience, how you want to design the front end, 
and then at the back end how you want to uh, kind of you know have your support the complete servers and all the system running so understanding the whole thing from a business need perspective from the perspective of designing the whole system from the perspective of architecturing it then programming it so in inside digital transformation uh, uh, also we will need understanding of that particular domain or industry for which the digital transformation is happening because the uh, let's say transformation of uh, uh, a supply chain management system like amazon versus uh, you know digital transformation uh, for a bank or for a government uh, office you know those would be different so it will need some understanding of that domain also or that industry also but the underlying software the design and the it infra everything you know there we will be able to bring in the real technology expertise so marrying these two competences you know then we can define so you have to if you are interested in this you can become an expert of a particular domain if you are just working for financials banking then you can become an expert and then you can work more on the digital transformation uh, of those instead of continuing to work in some of the maybe little older areas related to banking and financial right so this will give you growth basically then delivery and operations transformation so uh, uh, again the way maybe some of these industries and uh, business houses used to work the way they would be delivering before uh, the way the telecom operators were delivering those will not be same with change of technology as well as change of market demand so uh, again uh, from uh, some of you who might maybe you know if you are uh, looking for um, let's say you might have done your engineering and then if you are wanting to kind of you know have an mba degree and then kind of get into maybe these kind of transformation operational transformation related areas this could be a good option for you then from a more development perspective devops so devops specialists are really on demand again you know you can be a scrum master you can be a, you know agile devops practitioner uh, understanding the complete tool chain how uh, basically it enables a software development as well as a services you know workflow so this is something you know which uh, the devops specialists do and uh, again you know uh, this kind of enables uh, delivery of different applications uh, it could be even a mobile application but the way you see that it gets mm, totally pushed into our uh, mobile system our device without we needing to do anything so all that kind of a streamline process has been possible because of devops uh, mm, practice practices so this is again uh, an area where there is a lot of demand full stack engineer so even if you are let's say a front end you could be a front end engineer like just a web developer uh, you know uh, or you could be a uh, back end uh, developer you know who is working more on the servers and the back end but if you have a full stack development uh, uh, understanding uh, the designing architecture everything those skills are really niche skills and very much high in demand and they get paid higher to be honest okay so um, uh, so uh, again so these are uh, this is kind of you know something uh, very good to have kind of a skill if you have couple of years of experience you can really try to become a full stack uh, developer uh, java has is always ever green it, it's uh, you know demand never dies uh, the moment you have to develop really some uh, kind of you know complex system i mean this, this still kind of you know is is extremely important uh, and if there is a lot of demand, then you know we talked about web de development, front end and back end development, game development. You know uh, is again another area where there is a lot of demand, and product and program management. So when industry is going through so much of change in technology, so many new applications, uh, it needs a lot of focus on managing the whole thing. You know, connecting the dots, understanding the big picture, and rolling out, uh, rolling it out uh, as per customer requirement as per contract so product management for new products and program management for really delivering it in you know customer environment so uh, these are again uh, more of management skills at, but quite uh, you know uh, in demand and and very important for the industry to succeed 
so uh, these are basically you know some of the things which i wanted to share and i'm just looking at how much time we are left with i think we are left with about 15 20 minutes more maybe i will take a pause here and rather we can have some q and a and we can focus on the questions yes sudakshana i can see we are having some questions here in the q and a section probably we can start with those so samantha has written that uh, you know that i have two questions one how to cope up with the continuous learning expectation in the industry i am a qa engineer with 11 years of experience somehow remained in the same designation due to a lot of politics i have always been open to learning how to tackle the attitude of the male dominated world concept it's a it's a very interesting question samantha uh, hmm. i would say you know i can really tell you from my experience that there is no other alternative of hard work uh, being flexible being agile and being a key learner okay so um, uh, qa is a very very uh, vast area also i mean and has a lot of potential you know so um, you know one has to really learn uh, maybe what you can do is kind of really focus in kind of you know continuously learning on the new areas and when i i say that you know continuous learning uh, in the industry yes it will involve some element of hard work too uh, you know i mean whatever i know i am already in my comfort zone and then i really have to further learn something new and for that i have to take initiative maybe i may have to give a little extra time or i may have to be really smart you know being able to complete my day job little quicker and then spending some effort in learning the new things and uh, just maybe you know keeping an eye i mean today we have so much of information uh, you know uh, on the internet so you can subscribe to some of the sites you know which keeps sending some small small you know uh, bits and pieces of information uh, on you know how the different technology evolution is happening you can yourself kind of you know do some implement something small and do some poc you know uh, maybe as an additional initiative then you can go to your manager and show that this is what i try to build and you know maybe you are doing qa then you can build in some automation you can little bit learn certain automation um, functions you know a small scripting language and you can automate some of the um, maybe test cases and you can show it and then those are the kind of things which will really value uh, you know what you are doing so uh, I, i would say uh, continue to take initiative continue to show your enthusiasm keep learning about new things i'm sure your effort will be definitely recognized and and uh, you know and that is what and also uh, of course i do not know maybe exactly what kind of scenarios you faced when you say that uh, male dominated world or you know issues you have faced uh, uh nowadays in most of the companies you know there is a lot of focus in bringing in a very um, uh, i would say egalitarian environment i mean it's there is no differentiation uh, uh companies are uh, really working hard to remove any unconscious biases which might be there uh, and i i i think you know and, and that's what my personal experience has always been that if as an individual i have to take responsibility of my career too and if i am showing initiative and if i am really reaching out and i am showing results i am showing performance then uh, in most of the cases in most of the circumstances that gets recognized so uh, that is how i will put it up but of course if you are really facing uh, you know uh, in some more challenges you can always talk to your manager you can talk to the hr partners you can talk to your skip level manager you know and uh, so on and so forth i hope it answers uh, your question samantha uh, uh another question i see is can i switch my technology completely it's an anonymous question uh, because i found that tech i am using is sqi completely not aware of it also so i wanted to move to development side and grow my uh, career as development uh, of course i mean you can at any point of time uh, nowadays there are 
again lots of free courses as you know coursera you know or paid up courses also so uh, but just learning software development is something which to be honest even kids in the school are also nowadays they have they are really exposed so much to those so um, definitely i think you know that is something which you can uh, go for it's it's a it's a good idea expanding your horizon and uh, i would uh, recommend really go for a certification also uh, along with it you know the certifications are usually quite stringent and it really needs you to work hard and learn the topic very well so uh, if if you are really having that expertise even though uh, you may not have experience in development i'm sure with the certification and everything you know you will get an edge for getting inducted or getting hired somewhere for your development skills also another question we have is amulya is saying that how do you get your resume across when you have the experience and skill sets but lost your job during covid any return to work programs to help train on the job initially so uh, uh, here i think you know uh, of course you know with the pandemic situation improving and lot of demands uh, being in there uh, please do keep applying uh, and if you had a good experience uh, definitely it should get noticed at the same time uh, in terms of getting noticed a few additional things you can always do for example we have some very good platforms for professionals in technology which is like linkedin or uh, you know there are other blogging platforms uh, i would recommend if you have time you can always uh, write articles uh, you know you can then do some certifications additionally this will help you this will kind of show also that you are constantly trying to keep updated uh, you know and and so on and so forth and you are really um, keen to apply your knowledge and share it also with others uh, return to work programs of course there are uh, i think now it is in many many companies you know and uh, jobs for her itself is has a very good platform i think you know there are lot of advertisements it collaborates with many companies so you should definitely use this platform also and uh, then uh i'm sure you would be looking through all the standard uh, channels like nokri.com or linkedin and all other areas or maybe getting connected to different consultants you know continue to do that uh, use your network you know your friends your ex colleagues everybody and um, kind of take help uh, through them to kind of you know um, uh, circulate your cv to as many places as possible never parallelize Uh, never sequentialize constantly i mean do everything in parallel uh, if you are really kind of you know wanting to go get back to a uh, job you know quickly uh next question uh, again is you know i am a qa manager with new certification skills of cisa and cloud security uh, from amulya okay yeah yeah uh, it's it's for you yeah so qa uh, managers definitely has has got good demands you know and cloud security uh one uh, just suggestion uh, of course amulya i am not sure uh, what are your other skills but if you have an expertise in security security is again a very hot topic you know a lot of companies are hiring so continue to look for and cloud again you know there i would say uh, this is a very good combination so outside security also cloud security also if you can do some more certifications overall in terms of cloud you know it's it's domain architecture and uh, distributed cloud etc that might as well give you uh, even a bigger edge you know that will expand your horizon more so you can look for that next question is i have a gap of 5 to 6 years in my employment and i was in java development i have a complete experience of 3 years how should i start again to get a job in it okay so in 5 6 years java technology has really moved Uh, um, a lot right it has really progressed and evolved a lot so i would say that and java is always in demand so there is always a dearth of good java programmers okay so i think that way your field is a is a good field uh, only thing you have to do is you have to immediately get up to date so again here recommendation is just update upgrade your skills go for again some certifications and keep applying i'm sure you know you can get back so again it getting back is always something which will not be 
I must say it honestly, it will not be just a cake work. I mean, after a gap of a couple of years, of course, there are many companies who are working on, you know, uh, this, you know, uh, uh, re working for restarters who want to get back. And there is a lot of enablement. But at the same time, a person is hired for the person's quality, knowledge, performance, experience, all these things. So, and and there will be a competition, right? So it is always good to rather prepare for that competition and also use all the enablements from, uh, you know, uh, companies like Jobs for Her or all other companies, you know, they have their programs for getting back for the restarters. But make you have to first ensure that you are up to date because five, six years in technology line is something which really needs some update. But I'm sure, you know, with your interest and uh, the fact that, you know, you are wanting to get back is something which will really kind of, you know, uh, help you with that passion. You can kind of really work on it. Yeah. Uh, which IT field can I enter after having a break in career and have little knowledge of technology, though postgraduate uh, in computers, have experience in operations and warehouse management? Okay. So, uh, it, it, there are, I think, you know, uh, three, four different types of, at a very, very broad level, three, four different types of uh, job roles, which each company has. Uh, one is like hardcore development, software development, product development in technology. Uh, since you did not have an experience in that, uh, you know, uh, and you had a break, I would suggest that right now not to aim for that. The second part is management. So in case you have also done uh, an MBA or had, because you said, you know, you have experience in operations and warehouse management. So you had some management experience. Uh, you can, uh, you know, look for services operations kind of jobs in different companies, you know. Uh, and, and of course, you know, uh, these warehouse and management, etc., are also extremely kind of, you know, uh, on high demand today because of uh, the way a lot of changes has happened, uh, you know, around us due to the pandemic also. I mean, a lot of online buying and everything. So um, I would say you use your strength, you know, operations and management. You may uh, look for uh, uh, kind of, you know, jobs there. And uh, but then, of course, you know, I think for any career break, it's important that you start showing your relevance uh, now and you show that eagerness you show that uh, the fact that you are key to keen to learn you know uh, so all that people are ready to give opportunity to somebody who may, may have missed on a little bit of experience in between but that potential and the keenness to learn and the keenness to work hard these really have to come out very convincingly, okay? And through evidences, and the evidences could be you doing a certification, you doing uh, at least like, you know, writing some articles, which would be found very relevant, which would show your enough research skills or anything like that has to come out. Uh, otherwise, any high, just put yourself in a hiring manager's shoes. They will not, they will have to be confident that if they hire you, their work will get done finally, right? So how will get they get they get that confidence? So you really have to show uh, certain things you are doing, also certain uh, initiatives you are taking. So so all those have to be done. Uh, Chandana is writing: Is RPA a field in which one can get involved after a long career break, having been previously involved in software programming? Yes, of course. Uh, it's a relatively easier uh, programming language than C. I would say so definitely you know much more um, you, you will be much quicker to pick it up uh, you know and definitely you should but then don't keep yourself limited to rpa because rpa also is in industry for last maybe five six seven eight years at least so uh, also look into all adjacency learn some python programming you know or some of the other scripts and and i think that will help you even more uh, I am a current employer in Amazon Development Center as a senior customer service executive with graduation background in computer science. What would be the good area of learning for me to settle in the technology industry? This is a very uh, a current employee, I think you might have meant then, uh, in Amazon Development Center as senior customer service executive. 
so you are into senior customer service executive uh, uh you know i think uh, because maybe it looks to me that your profile is little bit kind of you know if it is about customer management uh, you know uh, you can also do some uh, project management you can acquire some skills on project management you can do some pmi certification and those kind of things and then you can get into a technology company as a project manager or uh, if you have a very good understanding of what the customers need you know for the kind of uh, domains i mean in amazon development center i i don't know what kind of uh, uh, what uh, domains for which you work you know what kind of customers for which you work but in the same domain uh, if it is related to technology then you can uh, then target some of those companies actually and there you can join as a project manager because you uh, get an outside in view of the customer and that is something which will be uh, kind of appreciated in maybe you know uh, some of these technology companies for someone uh, next question veena is asking that someone currently in their career break how can i get into product management i don't have relevant experience in it yet okay so uh, vina i i'm not sure what is your experience so far uh, yeah what product management needs you know uh, is basically uh, it needs a sort of an understanding of market requirements and based on that defining what exactly are required you know for this product and uh, needs defining the requirements for that product you know based on the end business needs or end market needs then it needs working closely with the uh, software development team you know which is developing that product assuming these are software products okay uh, and it needs kind of you know uh, the skills of managing the budget so under a certain budget that whole product development has to happen then it needs skills related to rolling out the product into different customer environments you know until the time the product is matured so it's a very thorough management skills it needs then it needs some level of understanding of uh, if it is software product you know how the software development uh, framework works you know it needs some level of market understanding so if you are interested in product management then you really have to build all these skills you know and uh, if you already have past experience in some of these then you can further nurture and uh, kind of you know uh, uh, then grow on that okay there is a very interesting question i want to pick it up uh, you know uh, ramya is saying that i worked for 17 years in uh, psus in telecom domain i recently quit and wanted to choose a challenging career i am currently pursuing a data science course but i am very doubtful if i would get a job as i am already 39 years old now do you have any suggestions for me please so ramya i would say that uh, of course in the industry there would be kind of uh, perhaps more requirement for uh, you know uh, younger engineers who are kind of maybe starting at the career uh, so maybe more developers or more uh, people who are more at the starting level but at the same time 39 is definitely not an age where you uh, need to think that you cannot continue with your career uh, so it's good to know that you are pursuing data science course uh, uh, i do not know which data science course you are pursuing uh, i i would suggest here that just take a look at it i mean do some googling you will find there are a lot of courses i mean just pure data science is more about you know really statistical handling and, and the real data science part of it but if you have worked in telecom overall look at how uh, look at some courses even on ai ml also which is also about uh, applying the data sciences and ai ml technology for certain business problems just to give an example because maybe my expertise also is in telecom so i can perhaps share a relevant example that with 5g network evolution there is so much of dependency on ai ml for managing the network complexity and because without that it's impossible to manage it through just the traditional mechanisms of having some dashboards having some analytics 
so if you can uh, uh, sort of connect these dots and if you can kind of you know do a good business course also an application of data science ai ml etc you know and uh, which will be applicable for telecom domain you can get jobs as let's say network optimization uh, lead you know for large telecom operators or uh, even telecom vendors so uh, that is one path definitely you can think of uh, because i see again you know this is a particular role uh, which has started really kind of you know um, uh, getting a lot of traction you know application of ai ml in business context so maybe you can look for that so uh, maybe i'll take this last question sanjana is asking i am an mba with product management experience in banking as a product manager in a tech firm from the other side what skills are needed additionally how can you start the learning process it's a great question so your domain expertise is in banking uh, but you want to join a tech firm which could be like it or software product or telecom product or something like that and uh, you know uh, but you have product management experience and you want to apply it yes so uh, i think it's it's you are at a good place uh, i think sanjana so you just have to little bit understand about software development i do not know what is your uh, actual educational uh, qualification in case you you have done your uh, engineering or mba or uh, sorry or mca or that kind of thing so if you have some computer science background uh, then you know joining in a tech firm uh, with that background with product management experience is good and whatever tech firm where you want to join you have to look at its domain also so if that tech firm is for example working for telecom then you have to gather some telecom related understanding to work as a product manager there if the tech firm is mm, kind of you know uh, let's say working for uh, mm, working for maybe you know other kind of you know online shopping or uh, maybe related to clothing and garments industry and they are developing a, a mobile application product which is about you know uh, like let's say for max and spencer then uh, you know uh, you have to gather some knowledge of maybe that particular domain also so uh, that will definitely help you but i think your core knowledge of product management uh, you know uh, will definitely kind of you know also stand out so just add the domain knowledge and uh, kind of you know uh, whichever tech firm you are targeting and then you can apply for it okay so uh, pratishtha i think you know uh, i don't know if we have time to take any more questions uh, otherwise uh, maybe I, we I can think, answer um, offline the later yes yes we can answer them offline and um, so dakshina will be answering all your questions and i will be sharing them on our uh, groups women in tech so do keep an eye out for all your answers there i would like to thank you all for being a part of this wonderful session and thank you so much for your time and all the knowledge and experience you have shared with us today sudakshana it was really insightful and very interesting session today thank you so much thank you very much pratishtha thanks to jobs for her and thank you to all the participants and i want to even thank uh, my company arison also for kind of you know joining hands with jobs for her and sort of you know uh, giving me this opportunity thanks a lot yeah